Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity and today I am reviewing Battle Axe on the Series X. This has been developed by Bitmap Bureau and Hank Neuberg and published by Numskull Games. So what is Battle Axe? Battle Axe is an isometric 2D hack and slash game in a retro art style funded with the help of Kickstarter. Now, for transparency, I can confirm I was one of those backers. However, this will not influence my opinion on reviewing the game. The premise is that the homeland of Mercia has been held by the tyrannical clutches of the malevolent sorceress Ethereld. Fed up with the way they are being treated, a party of mercenaries attempt to stop Ethereld and her evil cohorts. But, regretfully, none of them have ever returned. So, it's up to you to do what they couldn't. The game boasts three different character types in which to play through the single player campaign. A co-op option, a unlimited mode and a game plus. Let's get into the gameplay. Being a fan of retro games, I was instantly excited in the premise of a new hack and slash, which has similar traits to Gauntlet and Golden Axe. Throw in some legendary composers stroke designers and you can see why this game was funded very quickly. You start off choosing your character that you'll be playing as. Each has unique attacks and health which you won't know about until you play as the character in question. Each hero is equipped with a melee, ranged and a special ability for their attacks. The Marauder is the tank of the group with a larger health by bar 1. He also has a rush attack for a special ability and a slow melee attack in the form of bashing people with his cannon. However, he does have a pretty quick ranged attack, shooting cannonballs from a set cannon. The druid of the group is the mid-tier character with a powerful ranged spell attack but an average melee attack involving whacking enemies with his beard but his special ability is the best, as you can warp a short distance, which is helpful for getting out of crowds. The Dark Elf is, as you expect, the Agile character. She wields dual blades, which are very quick and good on damage, and her special ability is a whirlwind attack, good for taking out crowds quickly. However, her throwing blade is by far the worst of the ranged, and a lot slower than others, with it sometimes not even functioning, which I believe is more of a bug than by design. It is also at this screen you can add a second player, which will take one of the other characters not chosen. Once selected, your journey begins. You start the level and are soon faced with swarms of enemies to feed, villagers to save and coin to collect as you make your way to the end of level and the upcoming boss. Now this may sound easy but the game's enemies track you well and you will often be outnumbered. Reminiscent to Golden Axe, careful use of all attacks whilst moving is essential in getting good combos and is part of its fun experience. It is also not as simple as just ploughing through enemies to get to the boss as some parts of the map are locked off in the way of generators which will need to be destroyed in order to progress. The game's controls are smooth and responsive, however I did notice a couple of elements that could frustrate players. Attacking is limited to 8 different angles, with the 45 degree angle being the most hit and miss. The game's maps are isometric, and because most enemies attacking come from a range of angles, you can easily miss hitting the said enemy if they are in your attacking blind spot. Now mostly this isn't an issue as the maps are big enough to simply avoid, however it's the bridge sections that are death sentences as they are designed to be located in the exact angle your attacking blind spot is. Combine that with enemies that have ranged attacks that align with that angle unlike yours and you can easily find yourself unable to attack or avoid an enemy's attack. My advice, get through the bridges quickly as you can. 
Being inspired as a retro game, you have a limited number of lives, and once lost, you are taken back to start the game again, afresh. As you make your way through the map, hidden villages are located everywhere, with a village account located in the left hand corner of your screen. Collecting these boosts your score significantly, so ensuring you search everywhere is required to get that much needed high score. Of course, the biggest way to get a good score is defeating enemies who drop score boosting gems and coins needed for when you complete a level. Once you get to the end of a level, you are met with a unique boss. Each have their own attacking pattern for you to learn, and it will take a few attempts to learn them. Regardless, they are hugely fun and provide a great conclusion to the level in question. Once a level is completed, you are taken to your camp, which then allows players the option to purchase a variety of items to aid them on the next coming stage. The currency to purchase said items is where those coins you gather for killing enemies, so do keep an eye for them. Items range from one use area effect attacks like magic spells or bombs, to a chicken for an instant single bar healing, or a potion for full healing. There are also permanent stat items and these boost your damage, armor and speed. However, it's the extra health bar items that increase as you buy more that you really should be focusing on. Gameplay wise, I enjoy playing regardless of the character I was and co-op is a great addition. However, one area I do feel a little bit let down is in the campaign's number of level stroke bosses. There are four, that's right, only four levels and depending on your skill, could be completed in as short as half an hour. I personally would have expected at least double that and I think this is why Unlimited Mode was added to pack out the experience. Unlimited Mode is the gauntlet-like option you trying to find a corresponding amount of villages in what I believe to be a randomly generated map, while surviving an onslaught of enemies attacking you at every turn before moving on to the next stage. This is also great fun, but after a while can get a bit tedious and is more tuned for those score hunters out there. So what about the graphics? The game's visual style is the main wow factor and one that caught my eye from the very beginning. And after hearing that the legendary Hank Nyberg was going to be involved, you can see why it's visually impressive. The game oozes beauty in every pixelated detail, from the flowing of the tree leaves, fantastic enemies who explode in exaggerated torrents of blood and bits, to the striking boss designs. Each environment, whether it's floating grasslands connected by road bridges to the water surrounded castle or fire ridden wasteland, showcases off its own beauty. Enemy design is equally varied and stunning, and their smoothness of their movement along with the characters is top notch. Now, the stages themselves are a little on the small side, but I think this was an attempt in helping to keep the combat fluid enough not to become a grind. Saying that, I did find the Game Plus option to be a bit disappointing, with effectively the game reversing the campaign stages and just adding more enemies. Being only four stages again, I think this may be a disappointment for the average player. Visually though, the game perfectly encapsulates that retro feel and was a joy to behold from start to finish. The game's frame rate was a non-issue, even in the enemy heavy unlimited mode, where you really are put to your paces with a number of different enemies going off at once, and I never saw a bit of slowdown. And now to the sound. Again, similar to the graphics, another legendary person from the industry, composer Manami Sume has lent their talents to the game. And again, the Xbox tease is unmistakable, perfectly encapsulating that retro, almost arcade feel. 
the voice work stating your character has picked up something is fun to hear and just helps draw you into that retro feel. Character tags, explosions and general sounds of the game all use quality and it's hard to find any faults. The best way to play this game is with a good gaming headset or a soundbar to really listen to the quality on show here. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Battleaxe is on sale. The game is a joy to play with it hitting perfectly on the sound and visuals up front. However, the biggest issue for me is the price versus content. The game, in my opinion, is well overpriced for the amount you get, and due to its price, is going up against some big retro inspired hitters like Streets of Rage 4, whose content is treble what's on offer here. I backed this game at the cheaper price of £15, and I personally feel it should have remained at that price when released to the public. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £24.99, or approximately $30, and depending on your skill and patience, would give you about 3 hours worth of gameplay to potentially clear the story with each character, plus another 5 hours for Game Plus option with unlimited mode fully depending on your skill and patience. This great retro inspired hack and slash is a bit of a letdown due to its short campaign and high price point which left me wanting. If you are a retro fanboy you probably won't care about the price but for the general public this may be a bit high when other retro titles provide more content at that same price. I would say though, if you see this on sale and love retro, grab it, as it's a great game to play and the talent behind it is superb. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review and if you do, please like, share and subscribe if you so wish. And if you'd like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming and I'll see you all again soon.